Welcome to the Tending Our Nets podcast, where we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We encourage everyone to learn more. We work to equip believers to share their faith with everyone they know. Welcome to the Tending Our Nets podcast. My name is Joshua Sherman, and I am your host here. I'm in the middle of a series on the image of God and tying that into the gospel. I've been talking about uh, different implications of the image of God, whether we're talking about ethics or theology uh, or you know the personal uh, implications for us, which I talked about last week when we talk about surrendering to God, um, and also, of course, tying this into the gospel. Right? and answering questions about what I think the image is when we look at Scripture in context, and uh, looking at what various scholars and uh, people throughout church history have said the image is, and, and trying to connect all those dots well. Essentially what I've landed on is that the image of God is something that all of humanity bears, and the image of God is primarily about being children of God, and primarily about representing God well on earth. That was the mission, the function that we were given, and then we have these different attributes that we were given in order to kind of help us to do that well. Uh, and when we are in relationship with God, we do that more effectively than when we are out of relationship with God or more distant from God. Uh, so that's kind of just a quick summary, uh, looking at uh, the number of different kinds of implications, obviously, on ethics. Uh, if we want to say that there are some people that don't bear the image of God, I think that has some pretty um, bad implications for ethics, because the image of God is put forth in Scripture as one of the reasons why we're supposed to treat people well. So if we're able to kind of marginalize people off to the side and say, well, yeah, but they don't bear the image of God because they don't have this property or because um, they aren't you know, clearly in relationship with God, um, that, that can give us an excuse. Uh, and we don't need that excuse. We're already bad enough uh, as it is in treating other people well. We also have the implications of needing to serve God and surrender. And that's what we talked about last week. So I want to tie into that a little bit this, this week. Um, and last week I was looking at Jesus when he answered the question of whether they should pay taxes to Caesar. What he does is he asks them for a coin. He shows them the coin and he says, whose image and inscription are on this coin? And then he says, render to Caesar what is Caesar's. It has his name and inscription, right? His, his image and inscription on it. And render to God what is God's. The implication then is that people belong to God because we bear his image and we've been inscribed with his name. Um, and we'll actually kind of get into his name uh, a little bit in, in a few episodes because um, bearing God's name is uh, more about being covenant people of God and actually taking up this mission to represent him well, what we were created to do, and uh, taking up that mission and trying to do it well. All right, so the next question then becomes, um, if Jesus is talking about that in the New Testament as if it still is relevant to people, what do we have when we talk about the image of God and the fall, right? What happened there? Was the image of God lost? Was it marred? Was it blurred, obscured in some way, right? Um, and this is something that, that comes into a number of different theological traditions. So you actually have traditions that will say the image of God was lost at the fall, and uh, what I want to address today is I think they are demonstrably wrong. So when you actually look at what Scripture says about the image of God, we see not only in the New Testament with Jesus not making any clarification, but just saying, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. And if we bear God's image, he's making an implication there that we belong to God, right? Um, so he doesn't make any clarification and say, you know, hey, you know, are you covenant people? Are you trying to do this well? He just says, here's, here's the deal, right? We also see in James, so James uh, talks about this in James 3.9. Um, he says uh, that it's a really bad thing when we use the tongue that we have to praise our Lord and Father, to praise God, to curse our brothers and sisters who were made in the likeness of God. So he's actually kind of hearkening back to the other term in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, where it says that, that God said, let us make man in our image and likeness, right? So those two are related somehow, and James is tying into the other one. So I think we definitely have this sense of the image and the likeness both being something that is relevant to people in the first century when Jesus is walking the earth and interacting with people and when James is writing his letter to the church. 
it would be hard for that to be true, especially in, when, in Jesus's case, interacting with the religious leaders there, if the image of God is something that people lost in the fall, right? You can explain James a little bit more because then we're talking about people actually uh, having the image recovered in its fullness through Christ, because Christ is the express image of God. And uh, as we are in relationship with him, we do have the fullness of that image, the likeness restored, right? So I think you can get a little bit of wiggle room with the James passage, but when we're talking about what Jesus said, I think it becomes pretty clear the image of God is still relevant to humanity. Therefore, it can't be something that was lost. And actually, if we go back even more to the beginning, we ask the question, Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden in Genesis 3. And sometimes people will get a little bit distracted because in Genesis 5.3, it says that Seth was made in Adam's image. And they'll infer from this, oh, that means humanity lost the image of God at the fall when Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. But that's demonstrably false, right? If you keep reading in Genesis, in Genesis 9-6, God says to Noah and his family after they come out of the ark, and he reestablishes the, the mandate and says, you know, be fruitful and multiply, which implies recreation, a kind of a, a, a fresh start in some way, if you will, after the flood waters recede. You have this sense that God is giving them the same mission he gave Adam and Eve, and then he says, you're not to shed the blood of other people because humanity was made in the image of God. If the image of God is still relevant to ethics in Genesis 9, after the flood, after the fall, I think it becomes really problematic to say that it was lost in the fall. That doesn't make any sense. So I think we have to kind of look at this and say, I think the, the best uh, way to see the image in scripture is that humanity was made in the image of God. That was all of humanity. Humanity retains the image of God in some way. We retain that responsibility, that calling to act as his children, as his representatives, right? We retain that. Whether or not we're doing it well is more kind of the question of likeness. And likeness is something that Jesus restores us to as we are in relationship with him. We are restored more in his image, in his likeness, to the fullness of what the image of God is supposed to be as we are representing God well. All right, so all of that to say, uh, there are a ton of kind of little details with that and kind of how everything fits together, but I don't think it works to say that humanity lost the image of God at the fall. And that has implications for how we declare the gospel right? Because if we're talking to people that also bear the image of God when we are preaching the gospel, part of what we are doing is calling them to take up the mission that humanity was created for. We're calling them into God's family. We're calling them to act as God's children. We're calling them to represent God well on earth as we were all originally designed to do. That's a very different thing from arguing that we've lost the image and now we're preaching in order to maybe have it come like full on transplanted into people, right? That's different. And I don't think that's what we see in scripture. Uh, so hopefully that helps to kind of understand a little bit more around the image of God and what the status of that is in a fallen world and how that ties into preaching the gospel today. Thanks for joining. Please like, subscribe in all of the usual places, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, etc., uh, because all of those things, writing reviews especially, rating, um, all of that helps to get the word out so that we can help to equip more and more people to share the gospel with everyone they know. God bless. You've been listening to the Tending Our Nets podcast. If you like what you hear, check us out at the Raven Creek Social Club and by searching for us on social media, be attending our nets.